So in this series of videos, we're going to have a 10 part series on food safety. So this first video is going to be an introduction. We're going to look at the reason why food safety is important and also some risk factors and some different foods that you need to watch out for. But the most important thing to remember with this is that it's having to do with food service. While it doesn't hurt at all to use any of these guidelines at home, this particular set of standards is going to be focused on food service use and what's required by the FDA in food service. The first thing we're going to talk about is why food safety is difficult. There's a few things that you need to consider with food safety. The first of which is that food safety is different than food quality. Food safety is whether or not your food is going to make someone sick or kill them. We're going to look at the different things that can cause illness and death to happen, but Food quality has to do with whether or not it tastes good, whether or not it looks good, and whether or not it's things that people want to consume. That is not what we're looking at with this particular section of your class. We are only concerned with whether or not your food is safe to consume and is not going to cause illness, injury, or death. The first reason that food safety is difficult is time. There are a couple of reasons for this. The first of which is training takes time. So when you're training employees, the amount of time that it takes to train them, you're paying them full, their full salary plus the salary of the person that's training them. So a lot of times people tend to short people on training time. And if you're not training people well, then they're not able to prepare food safely. The next consideration with time is the fact that you need to get food out to customers quickly. If you're not getting food out to customers quickly, then customers get unhappy. And sometimes that causes you to push things like cooking things long enough or checking temperatures or being careful with things like hand washing. The next reason that food safety is difficult has to do with pathogens. Pathogens are germs. They're things that make people sick. So you've got four different categories that are pertaining to food safety. The first is bacteria. Bacteria are generally naturally occurring in the food that we eat or in the presence of the humans that prepare the food. Then you have viruses. Viruses are passed from humans to food and then from food to humans. They can also be passed from human to human. Parasites are not something that we generally deal with in the United States, but they're definitely something that we need to know a little bit about. They require a living host to grow, and so generally we take them in when they're very small and then they grow to be larger over time. Fungi are things like yeast and molds that can grow in food and can also spoil the food. Generally, these are things that we're going to see in the food and notice them and not consume them because of that. Another reason why food safety can be difficult is unapproved suppliers. Unapproved suppliers are suppliers that are not inspected and that are not trackable. For example, you don't want to buy shrimp from the guy on the side of the road and serve it in your restaurant. It may be the best shrimp you've ever had in your life and you can definitely prepare it in your home, but you can't serve it to other people in a food service operation. So a fourth reason why food safety can be difficult is high risk customers. And there's a few reasons that you could be high risk. The elderly are considered high risk because their immune systems may have worn out. Toddlers and preschoolers are considered high risk because their immune systems haven't developed yet. And finally, those with compromised immune systems. This can be for a few different reasons. Some medications lower immune systems, also if you're on chemotherapy, and some people have naturally compromised immune systems due to certain medical conditions. All of these things make people more susceptible to illness, but they're not always conditions that you can see. So it's important to make sure that you're considering food safety in everything that you make so that you don't put those with compromised systems at risk. There are other reasons that food safety can be difficult, but the last one we're going to talk about is staff turnover. Within the food service industry, there's a great deal of turnover. This means that the staff are changing because they're either leaving or coming in. A lot of food service jobs end up being very short term. Sometimes it's because people are working there while they're in college or in high school. But it's important to know that regardless of how long someone is there, they can make somebody sick. So the level of training that they get is important regardless of how long they're be going to be there. Training is an investment that protects your business. There are a lot of problems that having a foodborne illness outbreak at your establishment can cause. The first of which is losing business. If people hear that your business has an issue, then you're going to get a bad reputation and bad press. You may have lawsuits filed against you, which can also result in higher insurance claims. 
Staff are gonna miss work if they're sick. And depending on the severity of the illness, you might have customers or staff members that may die. The reason for any foodborne illness is simply contamination. There are three different categories of contamination. The first category is biological. This includes bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. All of these are considered to be pathogens. The next category of contamination is chemical. Typically, this comes from things like cleaners. And the third category of contamination is physical. This is things that you can pick out of food, like band-aids and jewelry. Typically, these cause injury and not illness, but they're definitely something to consider. There are several ways that food becomes unsafe and can contribute to contamination. The first way that food can become unsafe is purchasing from unsafe sources. We talked about that a little bit before, about where you get your food and making sure that it's an approved and inspected source. The next way is not cooking food to correct temperatures. We all know that certain foods like chicken need to be cooked a certain temperature so that they're safe. This particular class is going to tell you how to make sure that those foods are cooked correctly. The next way is through holding food incorrectly. This means that you're keeping food out for serving, like a buffet, at the wrong temperatures. If hot food isn't kept hot enough or cold food isn't kept cold enough, it puts it right in the middle of that temperature danger zone, which means that it's gonna grow bacteria very quickly. Then we have contamination. Sometimes this is the wrong foods coming into contact with the wrong foods, things like raw chicken coming into contact with things like lettuce, and then the lettuce isn't cooked. Sometimes it's chemical contamination where a cleaner is sprayed on and not cleaned off properly. Sometimes it's concentrations of cleaners being too high. There's all sorts of ways that food can become contaminated. And the last one is gonna be poor personal hygiene. And we've heard a lot about poor personal hygiene recently, but it has to do with things like washing your hands, making sure your uniform is clean, and not coming into work when you're sick so that you're not spreading things to your customers. There are four risk factors that are considered to be the reasons why most food becomes unsafe. The first one is gonna be time temperature abuse. And you're gonna hear this term a lot throughout the next few videos. Basically, this means that food is left out at the wrong temperature for too long or for the wrong amount of time. Sometimes it also has to do with not cooking food to the correct temperature for the correct amount of time. And sometimes it has to do with things like storing food and not storing it at the correct temperature for too long or the wrong amount of time. So pretty much all of this relates back to the ways that food becomes unsafe. So these particular categories work for not cooking food to the correct temperature and then holding food at the wrong temperature. So the second risk factor is gonna be cross-contamination. And this is one food coming into contact with another food that it shouldn't. So for example, raw chicken with something like pico de gallo. Now, generally you're not gonna see this happen in everyday activities, but it can happen if you cut chicken on a cutting board and then cut the items for your pico de gallo, or it can happen in storage, or it can even happen in your grocery store cart. If you drop the chicken near any of the items that you're using for your pico de gallo. Typically, it's raw things coming in contact with ready to eat things, so things that you don't cook anymore. And it can actually be raw chicken with cooked chicken. This happens a lot when people are grilling, when you have uh, put raw chicken onto the grill and then put the cooked chicken onto the plate. People used to do that. And it's something that we generally think of as common sense, but it's important to be aware of it. The third risk factor is going to be poor personal hygiene. This is the most important one when it comes to viruses because it's pretty much the only way to prevent viruses. So your first thing is gonna be hand washing and we've heard a whole lot about that recently, but washing hands washes viruses off of your hands, so it's super important. Your next one is going to be things like coughing and sneezing. And coughing and sneezing is pretty much distributing germs directly onto your food. So it's important to either cover your cough or sneeze and cough into your elbow. Touching wounds can contribute to contamination as well, especially if it's infected. It's really important that you cover those properly. Your last major risk factor is working while sick. It's very important if you're sick to not go into work if you're working directly with people's food. One of the most important things for controlling illnesses in food is the temperatures that things are cooked to and held at. Foods that need to be controlled by temperature are called Temperature Control for Safety Foods, or TCS foods. You'll see this acronym quite a lot in any education program that's designed for food safety. There are several things that fall into these categories. 
As we go through this list, you're going to realize that these are the things that you naturally know to put in the refrigerator. So if anyone asks, what are some temperature control for safety foods, think about the things that you know that you have to keep put in the fridge. So the first category is dairy. Dairy is going to include any milk-based products. So milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, anything that contains dairy from cows. Eggs are also a TCS food. Meat and poultry are also temperature control for safety. Meat can include pork and beef, and it can include whole cuts or steaks and chops. Ground beef can include regular hamburger or sausage. Poultry includes ground poultry, like ground turkey, but it also includes turkey, chicken, and duck. Fish and shellfish are also TCS foods, or temperature control for safety. So that means that whole cuts of fish, fillets, steaks, and also shellfish like clams, oysters, and scallops. Baked potatoes are also considered TCS, which may seem slightly random. If they're uncooked, they're fine out at room temperature. But once they're baked, it's important to make sure that you keep them refrigerated. One thing that's kind of strange about baked potatoes is that they grow botulism very easily. So when you're storing them in the refrigerator, unwrap them out of their foil because if they're sealed up in the foil, that limits exposure to oxygen, which means that Clostridium botulinum that causes botulism can grow. Any grains after they're cooked need to be refrigerated. So this includes things like rice, quinoa, grits, oatmeal, and couscous. You also need to refrigerate any meat alternatives such as Beyond or Impossible Burgers or any soy products like tofu. Sprouts are another temperature control for safety food. They're considered to be so potentially hazardous that those that have compromised immune systems, the elderly and preschoolers who are considered to be high risk, should not really consume them. Any cut fruits or vegetables need to be refrigerated. Prior to being cut, it's not required, but it does help them last longer. That goes back to the food quality issue we were talking about before. It doesn't help with food safety, but it helps with food quality. For food safety, after they're cut, keep them in the refrigerator, especially things like melons and tomatoes. Garlic and oil mixtures are also considered in this category. And that may seem a little strange, but it has to do with the fact that they are sealed and therefore they're more susceptible to anaerobic bacteria such as Clostridium botulinum, otherwise known as botulism. Another important consideration that we briefly talked about before was high-risk individuals. These are people that are more likely to get ill from any foodborne illness risk exposure. We have three different categories here. The first category would be the elderly because their immune systems have worn out. Preschool and those younger than preschool are also in this category because their immune systems haven't quite developed yet. And then there are those with compromised immune systems due to medication or illness. You will also hear the term throughout your materials saying locations that primarily serve a high risk. These types of locations determine if you have a certain illness, what symptoms require you to be restricted from working around food or excluded, meaning that you stay home completely. So it's important to know what these terms mean. The locations that primarily serve the high risk kind of match up with each of the different categories. For elderly, that's going to mean things like rest homes and nursing homes. For preschoolers and those before preschool age, that would usually mean daycares and schools. And then for those that have compromised immune systems, things like hospitals. Training food service staff in food safety and ways to prevent foodborne illness is vitally important. It's something that gets skipped, however, often because when you are training someone, you're paying the person that's training and the person being trained. So it becomes very costly. This is why it's very important to have a plan in place for the ways that you're going to educate your employees on the best ways to prevent foodborne illness. While training is expensive, it is vital, and this needs to be considered when training every single employee. There are several agencies that are responsible for food safety and for enforcing food safety guidelines. They are at the federal and the local level. The first organization is federal. It's the FDA or the Food and Drug Administration. They're responsible for writing the guidelines that I'm sharing with you now. They write the FDA food code, which shares guidelines that while they're not law, are recommendations for keeping food safe. The FDA is also responsible for any food transported across state lines 
due to them being a federal organization. The next regulatory agency is the U.S. Department of Agriculture. You won't deal with them much in your everyday operations, but they're important to note because they're responsible for inspecting any meat products or animal products such as dairy and eggs. They have inspectors that go out to facilities and make sure that food is prepared safely. The next organization is the CDC, or the Center for Disease Control. Their main function is to deal with any outbreaks that you might have. They'll test products and figure out what foodborne illnesses are responsible. They're also responsible for regulating any new illnesses that come up. At the state and local level, you have the enforcement of all of these guidelines. Generally, these are organized by the state or the county, and this varies greatly by individual states. These are gonna be the people that are gonna be coming to your restaurants and inspecting them and ensuring that you're not making people sick. They're also going to be in charge of gathering information for any foodborne illness outbreaks. Some of the outbreaks will be covered at the local level, but if they get to be severe, then they become handled at the federal level with the Center for Disease Control. Hopefully throughout the course of this video, you've learned why food safety is difficult, but also why it's important. You're, you looked at the reasons that a foodborne illness can cause problems and your different types of contamination. You've also learned about the ways that food becomes unsafe and the four risk factors that contribute to that. We also went over TCS foods, meaning temperature controlled for safety. These are the foods that you need to be careful with with the temperatures you store them at and cook them to. Finally, we went over high risk populations, training, and the agencies that are responsible for the enforcement of food safety. Thank you.